Around the core of the galaxy is the SUM field that creates stability, then the supernova ring. Outside the supernova ring is the causal field. The causal field is where the spirit forms are generated. These spirit forms are called Carvidico. Car is a form of electron energy. Carvidico refers to the electron energy involved in the creation of spirit forms. There are two different types of spirit forms, Darius Duaricos and Darius Kualicos. These form the electroplasmatic energy that constitutes the structural elements of the seventh dimension. The seventh dimension is the speaking tube of God that runs through the other dimensions. See Volume 1 SUM model. This pure spirit energy is also called the involuted electroplasmatic structure, the sole substance of the seventh dimension. We might want to think about that again in terms of life and how thought, life and consciousness are one continuum, or how the impression of divine will strikes the seventh dimension or electroplasmatic forms. This creates a spirit energy that imprints in the sixth dimension or the pure light field of the higher contemplative angelic forces. This in turn imprints the fifth dimensional field of the purely electronic higher self without ego, which Alice Bailey refers to simply as the monads. As we saw in the previous chapters, these fifth dimensional entities accumulate spirit energy impressions and then organize the fourth dimensional field of different spiritual karmic essences, including the human holon, etheric doubles. The spirit energies also enter other forms of life, or what the Quran calls the jinns, as well as animals and trees, etc. To review, the core dual galaxies with life contain the following components. 1. The core emits alpha and beta waves, also known as two types of brain waves. 2. The SUM field. 3. Field of supernovas, stars. 4. Causal field for the creation of the different spiritual forms or entities, Carvidico. 5. Within the causal field, Carvidico creates two spirit engendering types, Darius Duaricos and Darius Kualicos. These form the electroplasmatic energy that constitutes the structural elements of the seventh dimension. See previous chapter on twin souls and evolutive planes. 6. Fifth ring cosmic dust. Any galactic formation carries with it a multiple universe description. This galactic formation that we are referring to is just on the physical plane of perception and is reflected in the fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh dimensional fields and then back down. Astrophysics as the study of the cosmos is analogous to the consideration of the outer raiment of God's body called the universe. This outer raiment is derived from a principal structure of a primary thought form. It creates a resonant field that produces the quantar and quasar that combine to form galaxies with life and galaxies without life. From the point of view of the whole structure of the universe, the galaxies without life exist as a means of holding the entire form or structure of the universe together. The galaxies with life are the way the consciousness and thought process of God's meditation becomes self-reflective and reunified with itself. The networks of galaxies with life create large fields of consciousness where the disposition of the different thinking layers are capacitated. Different stars and planets with life are then located so that the thinking layers can be grounded. Once this is stabilized, the process of the universe becoming conscious can begin. The universe becoming conscious can be perceived as the cosmos coming to know itself as God's skin, or as Newton put it, God's sensorium, where God experiences the phenomenal aspects of himself returning to consciousness.
cosmic science says there are three types of stars that have planets. The first is magnitude quan, which has 48 planets. The second is magnitude dian, which has 24 planets. And the third is magnitude om, which has 12 planets. This indicates that our star system originally had 12 planets. What is called Chiron and the other planet Niburon could be the 12th planet, as written about by Zachariah Sitchin. The main planets that concern the structure of the evolution of life as a solar system, a stable form, are actually the 10 planets that go from Pluto to Mercury, including Maldek, now the asteroid belt. It would appear that Vela Chopa 24 is a variation of an ohm type third magnitude star. Whereas the galactic axis has a Markopole and a Darkopole, the planetary supernova star has a Mardenpole at the top and a Dharmapole at the bottom. The Mardenpole sends out electrical lines of force Kappa Mars, and the Dharmapole sends out electrical lines of force Duar. In Kappa Mars lines of force, there are 32 types of seals radiating from the upper pole and 32 types of Dharma seals radiating from the lower pole. The 32 seals are the basis of the origin of the UR runes divided into two sets of 32, 64, and also the origin of the ACCA planetary Manitou. The AC is the Marden, and the CA is the Dharma. The Marden and the Dharma send out 32 seals each, created from the alpha and beta waves emanating from the core of the galaxy. This creates an etheric planetary structure. The star then ejects a planetary axis with a north pole, Marden, and the south pole, Dharma. The kappa seals then break off and become 32 electrically charged spaces, and the Dharma seals break off and become 32 quasi-material spheres between those spaces. This creates the Dharma ring. Note, the Dharma seal is the same as the seal for Kodon 16, the People Triumph, also recognized as the Seal of Solomon. The 32 Dharma seals set in these 32 spaces create the Dharma belt, which creates the potentiality for the activation of life, thought and consciousness. Inside this, a balance or equipoise is created. So there are 32 spheres and 32 spaces, and 36 lines of force, derived from the original 36 compressors, 12 each per soul atom ring. This disequilibrium of the 36 lines of force then creates the potential for the solstice and the equinox. The solstice axis is between the 18 and 36 line of force. The equinox axis is between the 9th and 27th lines of force. Rotating on its axis, the planet maintains balance by tilting between the two solstice points. This creates four seasons, the four cyclades and the potentiality for four cyclings to create a net week of four solar orbits. This is a very different perception than the modern astrophysics belief that planets are random clumps of condensations of stellar dust gathering around newly forming stars. It may be true that there are condensations like this, but such accretions occur, where and how they occur, because they conform to a fourth dimensional design principle elaborated as a stellar planetary grid, located at and defining a particular galactic sector. Of the 32 spheres, 28 develop what are called electrical coverings. As we know from the genetic code structure, each of those 64 codons have 6 lines, which creates 384 lines for the whole system, 96 times 4, 384. So you have the 4 spheres without electrical caps and 28 spheres with electrical caps. This is the harmonic basis of the 28-day cycle, as well as the 4 Cybang quadrants, 4 phases of the moon, etc. 
this numerology in the prototypes of the structure creates a planet capable of supporting life. This is an example of intelligent design or harmonic planning standard with everything in precise measure. Harmony is the ultimate law of divine nature. The solstice and equinox lines of force create a four-part structure that accommodates the DNA UR rune code or the four Cybank plates. Having an equatorial line creates a plate above and a plate below. Earth Ascending also contains a full description of a planet evolved from the primary blueprint described by cosmic science, inclusive of the basic components of the planetary field. Finally, 24 of the 28 spheres with electrical coverings are broken into 2,340 planetoids. Almost all are inhabited by life. Note. 2340 is a function of the law of time. 260 times 9 equals 2340. 140 times 13 equals 2340. 117 times 20 equals 2340. 4 times 585 equals 2340. The Venusian cycle. This is all a description of the cosmo-mathematical template that creates the potential for life. The human is the summation of the life process. Therefore, the purpose of a planet with life is to create and evolve the human as a complex sentient self-reflective being, whatever that looks like. The human type is made to evolve into a superhuman type. The difference between the human type and the superhuman type is that the human is unable to control or manage its emotions and the superhuman is able to control or manage its emotions. The management and control of the emotions has to do with the management and control of the ego. The ego feeds on emotions and emotions cling to the ego. This is the crux of the evolutionary psychology implicit in cosmic science. As mentioned earlier, Solar Moon 1 1970 initiated a 42-year cycle leading to 2012, when the embryonic phase of the creation of the superhuman is complete. Creation of the superhuman was essential because the human's difficulty in transcending its emotional body and ego was placing Earth in danger. Some humans understand this and work to overcome lower emotions, but without the context of cosmic science and its analysis of the current human-superhuman transition, it is hard to see the whole picture. For the most part, the thinking mass is incapable of grasping this point and for this reason, cosmic science was injected into the noosphere. Along with the galactic Mayan codes, Cosmic science creates the matrix for the reformulation of the human mind of the planetary human, so that the few who are disposed to this stage of evolution could enter this matrix into the superhuman stage, the activation of the noosphere between the years 2012 and 2013. The mass of humans that cannot understand this will be dismissed or the ships will come and take them to places where they can carry on their soul evolution on other planets in other parts of the universe, or maybe even in other universes. Those who are capable of the shift to the superhuman functioning will remain on the Earth to continue with the Earth's evolution into the supermental phase. Through the noosphere activation, the Earth as a whole system entity will be in the supermental phase. The supramental descent of divine consciousness, functioning in the supramental phase, includes universal recollection and the activation and normalization of telepathy, inclusive of the capacity for displacement. Displacement is how you move from one point to another point in the universe, by means of resonant transduction of the etheric body, along specific electrical lines of force. This can only come about through profound meditation that leads to advanced telepathic practices. 
The first stage of arousing the human into the superhuman is by means of pure profound meditation that clears the mind, revealing the ego as an illusion or trick of the mind. When you grasp this, then you can understand your irrational emotional behavior and eventually graduate into a higher phase, no longer fixated on past conditionings, but moving ahead into the potential of extended intelligent life throughout the cosmos. This is the opportunity available through meditation, opening to the capacity for telepathic functioning that evolves into the art of conscious displacement. This is how we get from the evolution of the cosmos or study of astrophysics to the human and the superhuman, where we regain our powers of telepathy and displacement. At this stage, we will be able to move through the cosmos as a whole system's context, with knowledge of the purpose of creation. The purpose of cosmic creation is the self-realized redemption of the whole order of reality as a luminous function of a higher universal mind, the Omega Point, through which all will pass. But even the Omega Point is but a micro-illumination compared to the Ultimate. By the law of holonomic consistency, everything fits together as one whole, infusing every detail of creation with divine purpose. The word on the galactic front is that there is another vista or reality in store that we cannot yet perceive, because God's plan is vast and ungraspable. We can barely conceive of it, yet we know it is there. The Quran states several times that to God is our ultimate return, back to the point of origin, where we will live in mansions with flowing rivers, or else we will live in a hell appropriate to our disbelief or resistance to the truth. Mansions refers to the higher dimensions of the universe that are not subject to suffering, error and confusion to which our present mental universe is subject to. Hell is a stage of purification, for ultimately all is returned to God, the omnipotent source. All matter and the transmaterial substance continue through the evolutive planes transforming into pure electrophotonic radialization of matter, substanceless entities. Remembrance of God is the greatest good and God knows all that you do. Because God is one, all creation is one creation. To remember God is to be remembered by Him. When you remember Him, then He is remembering you since God is in control of all things. The prayer of remembrance is self-disclosure of God to Himself, which is to be remembered by Him through the vision of the unity of all creation. The message is in the unity of creation. We are a unity. Truth is a unity. The unit that you are and the unit that I am are the same prototypal unit. All life possesses the same unity. This unity is proof of the unity of all creation and the unity of God. When you maintain pure contemplative awareness, you are that unity, and all of creation is in you. Stand up and go to the highest place, the place that everyone knows exists. If there is unity, why are we confused? Confusion is not intrinsic to our being. Confusion is not a component of the intentional thinking element of the universe. Confusion is an illusory mind-created dilemma meant to be overcome and evolved out of. The only purpose that these states of mind, confusion, doubt, hope and fear, is to wear them out evolve and experience the self as a unity with all creation. The being that I am and that you are is one creation and one being. I am looking at you from inside of me and you are looking at me from inside of you. 
To think there are two is a fallacy. There is one. To labor for the benefit of one is to labor for the benefit of all. Cosmic science is the description of how the finite unit is meant to be reintegrated into the infinite unit. Cosmic science is the demonstration of the unity of all creation. The unification of all elements in the universe by common plasmatic electronic flows and interactions in a continuous genesis, extending from the internal generators of the human body to the outermost reaches of highly evolved supernova and pulsars, define the limits of the evolution of matter as a spiritual essence of all creation. This entire cosmic process is telepathically webbed into mutually interpenetrating dimensions, knowable to the intentional thinking element of the cosmos, leading it ever onward toward ultimate communion with the one divine creator.